In this video I would like us to take another look at consumables. SLS recently released a new dev blog about the armory and this dev blog raises the question of how bad consumables are in comparison to equipment. Now this isn't a video where I ask a question in the beginning and end it by giving that question a definitive answer. I would instead like to start a discussion with you guys and hopefully find a lot of interesting answers together. So when the video is over jump down to the comments, comment on reddit or head to my discord server and keep the discussion going there. The link to it is in the description. So let's take a look at this dev blog. First of all I have to say I love this blog entry. RNG really shows us information here that is both detailed and still very easy to grasp. More of this SLS, it's great. After evaluating the armory so far, SLS have compiled a list with both positive and negative effects of the armory as it is now, and also written about its future potential. Some positives are that the armory gives players more many real and meaningful options, that some equipment such as Crown of Power can create interesting minigames by themselves, and it has created a difference in gameplay between the first three rounds as the number of items you can choose ramps up. And I agree with this, all of these are reasons why I think that the armory overall is a really good addition to Battle Right. Moving on, some of the negatives are that an item system would cause perception problems among players regarding the nature of equipment and consumables carried over from Royale. And that the armory introduced another layer of new effects and abilities players had to keep track of when there was already a lot to remember, and was perceived as chaotic and random despite there being no actual randomness. Now just remember these while we go forward to the data drop. This infographic is what makes this blog entry so wonderful. We get to see the most popular item picks at the top. If we go all the way down we see the least picked item and the item with the lowest win rate. If you have as powerful skills of observation as I have you will have noticed that both of these are consumables. And if we go back to the top to see the most popular picks in the armory we see that they are all equipment. Popular consumables don't come into play before round 3 where we are forced to pick a consumable. So it's safe to say that equipment seem more popular than consumables. Now let's take a look at the part in the middle here. This shows us exactly how much more popular equipment is. This section only gives us information about round 1 and 2, the rounds where we don't have to pick a consumable if we don't want to. It says, and I quote here, the least popular equipment is still more picked than the most popular consumable for the first two rounds. So as we see here in round one, the Void Reaper is the least popular equipment. It is picked in around 2.5% of the games. That's rare. That's like almost never. So let's look at the most popular consumable in round one. That is the explosive barrel and the most popular consumable is picked in around 1% of all game. It is actually picked less than almost never. Okay let's go on to round two then when you can actually pick two items so maybe now it should look better for the consumables. If we look at the Void Reaper still the least popular piece of equipment in the game in round two it's jumped up to 5%. It's doubled its pick rate. Not that bad for the least popular equipment, right? Good on ya. So how is it going for the most popular consumable then? Still 1%. This is absolutely amazing. I did not think the difference would be this big when it comes to the pick rate. Again, the most popular consumable is less popular than the least popular equipment and picked in rounds 1 and 2 in around 1% of all games being played. Now here comes the question, are consumables really this bad? Remember how I told you to remember some of the negative aspects of the armory that were listed above. Is it possible that consumables are actually better and would have better numbers if we were more used to them? Better at keeping track of them so to speak. Do they suffer from poor perception and the idea that they're actually more of a copy paste from Royale than they actually are? 
that they are perceived as more random than they actually are and therefore picked less than they should. Maybe. Would that make a difference, though? On one hand, no. Like Meeper said in the Pipe Men State of Balance podcast, perception is reality. Even if we perceive consumables to be worse than they actually are, they still need some changes in order for that perception to be different and for us to start picking them. On the other hand, yes, whether it's just a matter of perception or not would be important to what specific changes are required. And changes are coming, SLS are staying true to their word and are regularly hotfixing, patching and changing the game. A patch to the armory is coming this week already. Now I have a hard time seeing that consumables will skyrocket in pick rate after one patch already. I think SLS have a tougher nut to crack than that which will take a bit more time. But a new question comes to mind here. Should we maybe just be allowed to pick three pieces of equipment instead of being forced to pick one consumable because if we weren't we wouldn't pick consumables and if no one would pick consumables why are they even in the game? Let's translate the equipment consumable pick ratio to another situation. Imagine I'm a grocery store owner. Imagine I love orange juice and uh, cucumber juice. So I get four brands of orange juice and four brands of cucumber juice and put them on my shelves. After a while, I see that my customers really like orange juice. Even the least popular orange juice brand is purchased by 5% of my customers. Meanwhile, the most popular cucumber juice brand is only purchased by 1% of my customers. Imagine how much I sell of the other three brands. Less than 1% of my customers even touch it. It would be really hard for me to justify to keep bringing in four brands of cucumber juice, if any brand of the stuff at all. People simply don't want it. And the analogy only works pretty well. The armory is in a grocery store and SLS aren't losing money to keep the consumables in stock. But how unpopular do these things need to be before they get straight up removed from the game? Now hold my horses, slow me down a bit, I'm not saying remove consumables. At least not yet, it is way too early to do something that drastic. We have to give this thing more time to really be able to say that we've tried them and evaluated them. What SLS are doing with both the actual patches, hotfixes and also the communication around them is exactly what we need in order to arrive at the best possible solution. I will say this though. Consumables are probably pretty bad. I mean, if they were good and improved our chances of winning around like most of us would agree that Heart of Boulder Pass, Crown of Power, Telos Quickblade all do, they would be picked. There are people out there who would figure that out. Battle right is a competitive game. We who play like to compete, and everyone who likes to compete like one certain part of it significantly more than the other winning we want to win and if consumables were the way to do that then consumables are what we'd pick i think but enough about what i think when discussing questions such as these where our perceptions are as important as or sometimes literally is the reality your opinions are the answer so i ask you I implore you, hell, I beg you, let me know what you think about all this. Are consumables as bad as the numbers suggest? What should be done with them? Tell me what you think in the comments section on Reddit or in my Discord server. You'll find the link to it in the description. My name is John Felix. I'm the Battle Right Profiler. If you like my content, do drop a sub on your way out. Thank you so much for watching.